Hello, boys and girls. I'm Miss Denise, and here we are at St. Gabriel's. It's January 24th. It's also my mom's birthday. So I want to wish her a happy birthday today. I hope she's watching. All right, boys and girls, today, guess what? That's the word. The word is everything. We are going to talk about everything. What does everything mean? Today, I want you to think you're going to leave your house. You just have to leave. Someone called you and you're moving. You're going to leave your house. What would you take with you? Maybe you might want to hit pause and maybe talk. Look around your house. What would you take with you? Would you take the rest of your family? Would you take pictures? <gasps> pictures? <gasps> all those pictures that remember all the special times in your life? What about your wallet? What about your money? What about food? Clothes? Your phone? A blanket? Food? A, oh, a lot of food. A flashlight? Wow. So, hit pause. Take a quick walk through your house. What would you take with you? Hmm. And then turn the TV back on. I'll be waiting. I hope you did that. Now, of course, it's hard to think, and it's sad to think, that you would have to leave your house. And what would you take with you? Part of you is sad. You would miss everything. You would miss loads of things. Another part of me would be kind of scared, right? What if I needed something that I left behind? Whew. What if it was cold? What if I didn't have enough food? What if I forgot to bring my mom and I would need my mom? Could you imagine? So there's a lot to think about when you're leaving and you're going to leave everything behind. Now, boys and girls, we thank God every day. We don't have to leave. Jesus doesn't expect us to do that, right? But today, in the Bible story, it's such a fun story because the gospel talks about leaving. So I want you to listen and get ready for this gospel. It was written by, let me just double check that. It was written by Mark. So it's Holy Gospel according to Mark. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and listen to the gospel so then we can talk a little bit more. Everyone, I think about you, I speak about you, and I keep you in my heart while I'm reading. I want you to think and listen for the word everything. So every time you hear the word everything in this story, the gospel, I want you to make a face. Make your fun, fun, fun face. Anything you want. You make a face while you're listening to this gospel story. Hands folded, get ready. Right after Jesus was baptized, he began his ministry and he chose some men to come with him as he traveled and preached. There were 12 of them. And we know those men as the 12 disciples or the 12 apostles. You might think these guys were special somehow. Like maybe they had everything in the Bible memorized, or they spent so much time praying more than sleeping. But the truth is, they were just regular guys, just like us. They sinned just like we do. They weren't perfect, and they didn't do anything to deserve traveling with Jesus and becoming one of his disciples. But they did do one thing that made them kind of special. They dropped everything. The first two men Jesus called were actually brothers. It was Simon and Andrew. Simon and Andrew were fishermen, so they spent their days out on the Sea of Galilee together casting nets and catching fish. Fishing was very important in two ways. It provided them with food to eat. I'm sure they sometimes wish they could eat something else for dinner. But at least they wouldn't starve. And 
guess what? Their job also provided them with money. Any fish they didn't eat, they could sell at the market. Now, that meant that they would have money to buy food, clothes, fishing supplies, and everything else that might pop up. Watch that word everything. I want to see that you're making a face when I say the word everything. It means a lot in this story. So for Simon and Andrew, fishing was everything. It took all their time and provided them with everything that they needed to survive. But remember what I just said. They dropped everything just to follow Jesus. Jesus saw them casting their nets and he called out to them, come, follow me, and I will send you out to fish for people. And they did. They left their nets, their fish, their home, their supplies, their friends, their money. They dropped everything to follow Jesus. But that's not all. Just a little while later, Jesus saw another group of fishermen out in a boat. Guess what? They were brothers named James and John. Fishing, they were fishing again with their father. Jesus called out to the brothers and immediately they left, you're right, everything behind, including their father. James and John dropped everything to follow after Jesus. I can't imagine what it must have felt like for them, leaving everything and everyone they knew, just to follow someone. Wow, they were going to follow a stranger. They were going to follow Jesus. The gospel of the Lord. And you say, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now, boys and girls, let's talk about that gospel. We are so blessed that we are not expected to drop everything, right? just to follow Jesus. We can follow Jesus every single day. And we can still have our homes, our toys, our money, our refrigerators full of food. But I bet you if we think about the word everything, we could drop some things, right? Let's change that word to some things. Maybe if we stop, and maybe you could have a family discussion, because I think a family discussion would help us Talk about, mom, dad, tell us some things you think I could do to help and to change so that I'm following Jesus better. And then boys and girls, maybe you stop and tell mom and dad, mom, dad, maybe you could do this to help follow Jesus better. Because if we put on our listening ears and we put our brain to work, we know. Now, boys and girls, I'll get your list started. What if you think about disobeying? Sometimes we disobey, especially during this COVID time. We're all home a lot together and we get frustrated. You know what I always say when you get frustrated? Hold your breath. <gasps> After you hold your breath, you're thinking, what should I say? And I always say WWJD, WWJD, WWJD. <gasps> And guess what? That means what would Jesus do? Hold your breath. And guess what? Think, what would Jesus do? And then say, sure, mom, I'm coming right down. I'm sorry I didn't listen. And it will help you, boys and girls. It will help us. So listen, listen, listen. Some other things that you might want to do. Maybe you'll give up one TV show and read the Bible. I bet all of you have a Bible in your house. And if you can't read yet, maybe mom and dad could read to you just a little bit. And maybe you'll start reading a little Bible story every single night. We have a rhyming Bible at home and it's so fun to read a rhyming story about Jesus. I have one to share with you in a minute. So boys and girls, this week, every single day, try to do one special thing for God. Try to think about everything in your life and what one little thing you could do that would be a little bit more pleasing to God 
your parents, your teachers, your friends, and I bet you'll come up with something. Now, boys and girls, one thing that I want to end on today is a fun story. And again, remember, it's a story, of course, but it's a story out of the Bible because Jesus always is teaching us if we listen and we learn. But Jonah was one of Jesus's followers that didn't listen one time. And so there's a story about him, and I'm going to read it, and I think you'll enjoy it. It makes you giggle, but it makes you think, hmm. So always have those ears open. The story is about Jonah who goes to Nineveh, okay? So get ready. I'm going to read, and you listen. God said to Jonah, I have a little task. Go get up and go to Nineveh and do what I ask. The people there are wicked, so tell them to obey. But Jonah got on board a ship, and he sailed the other way. God sent a windstorm to shake up the boat. The frightened sailors worried that it wouldn't stay afloat. Jonah had been sleeping, but he heard the captain cry, Everybody pray, or we might all die. Jonah told the sailors, it's all because of me. I'm sure the wind will stop if you throw me out to sea. They didn't want to do it, but the wind howled and roared. So they picked up Jonah and threw him overboard. When Jonah hit the water, the wind stopped blowing, the boat stopped lurching, and the waves stopped rolling. But God prepared a fish. And as soon as it arrived, it opened up its mouth and swallowed him alive. Down went Jonah with a great big swish. He landed at the bottom in the belly of a fish. For three days and three nights, he stayed that way. Then he prayed for help and, for help and promised to obey. Jonah was relieved when he saw what God had planned. The fish threw him up and tossed him on the land. God said to Jonah, I want them to repent. So go preach to Nineveh. And this time, Jonah went. So boys and girls, Jonah didn't listen at first, but then he did. And guess what? He learned a lesson. And he became one of Jesus' strong followers. So I want you this week to follow and to listen. Listen for your name being called. And think about all the things that you could drop to just follow Jesus. Think about everything. Goodbye, boys and girls. Have a great week.